Hello. Hello. Welcome to Say You Think You're Iconic, the movie podcast. Um, I'm a little cold, Kelly. I am not as You're cold. Not. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but like it's it's like ten o'clock and it's not even fifty degrees. Yet. Like I'm cold. It's fifty nine. Ch- what? It's fifty nine. Where, where you are? You, uh, you, you, you suck sometimes, Kelly. Yeah, just a little. Love bit. ya. But just sucks sometimes. But at the same and time. <laughs> and it's not, nothing of your doing either. No, like you, it is not. You, like, it's l- simply where you live. But I... Yeah, it is the area. I'm a little annoyed. Yeah, a little bit. Sorry. It's fine. I'll get over it eventually. <laughs> you'll you'll get there eventually, Jordan. The sun is the sun and the heat are coming your way. The sun will come I out promise. tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I just need to hang on till tomorrow. Because mm-hmm. there will be sun tomorrow. When I'm st- when, tomorrow, when I'm stuck with a day that's gray, <laughs> it's gray <laughs> and lonely <laughs> and lonely. <laughs> I just stick up my chin, the chin, and, and grin. What do you do? You grin and say, "What do you and say? say?" The sun will come out tomorrow. Yes, it will. Yeah, bet your bottom dollar, bro. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> It actually is going to be warmer tomorrow. Like, barely. But it's going to be warmer. <laughs> That's all we need to know. That it's going to yeah. be warmer. Yeah. How was your week, Kelly? It's all right. Um, I think I'm going to see one of our friends today. I still have to confirm that. But okay, cool. I might go see somebody today, which is going to be nice. Um, it was their birthday the other day. So happy birthday Ooh, to them. was it? Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll text Jordan, them. <laughs> Oops. Jordan. You know I'm terrible with birthdays. I literally I just told one of our other friends this the other, like, last week. I was like, you know I'm terrible. Well, I, was, I was thinking, it sh- I'm like. It sure I... was yesterday, wasn't it? Oops. It was. I was like, Oops. Maybe, I should, maybe I should, like, send something through the through the group chat like i should say you happy most birthday def- through the group chat most definitely should have. <laughs> but i was like no nah, maybe i'll just i'll just text them like through uh just regularly because i'm like one of our other friends will definitely remember <laughs> and i'm like i don't I know, know about jordan but maybe he will nope let me text them right now okay hey, All right, you do this. hey happy bestie happy birthday <laughs> You're I literally so just texted them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that for you. Uh, well, you yeah, yeah, at least you're only a day late. I'm only a day late. <laughs> yeah, you're only a day late. It's oh. not like it's more. Yeah. Yeah, so that's fine. You're 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 all right. Mm, not really, <laughs> but <laughs> you're okay. Yikes. Um, but yeah. Uh, also, what was there was something else I wanted to talk about. Oh no! Oh, I found out that there's like a game place near where I live that does axe throwing. <gasps> Fine. So I think I might take myself axe throwing. You should do that. Yeah, I like. I've I'm never, actually, never... I'm actually down for that. Yeah, you should do that. I've never done actual axe throwing. I've done like the fake one at yeah, the, Dave the, and Buster's. Like, arcade. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah, good yeah, at yeah, that. Yeah. So maybe I'm good at real axe throwing. I'm okay with that one. I feel like I'd be better with the real life stuff. But I don't know how heavy an axe is. I, I feel like I've never actually picked up an axe. You know what I mean? You've never, you've never held an axe before? I don't think so. I think it kind of just depends. Okay. I don't know but if there's yeah, like a I'm standard gonna... axe. Yeah, I don't either. I I'm gonna go try it out though. I need cool. to know if I can throw an axe. Okay, that sounds like fun. Yeah. If they have drinking there, don't drink too much. <laughs> yeah, they they actually do, which I'm like that. I feel which like that is shouldn't not smart. No, it's not. I'm like I feel like that no. shouldn't be in the same area with one another. Should not be allowed. Mm. Like it's a uh the place is an arcade slash. A bar grill with uh, the axe throwing. With axe throwing. 
Yeah. So, okay. hmm. Definitely don't drink an axe throw, guys. Yeah, maybe don't. Yeah, don't. But yeah, that's me. As for me, um, on Tuesday, I basically walked home in a Category 1 hurricane. Oh, yeah, you did, didn't you? And I came home drenched. Let me paint you oh, a yeah. picture. Yeah. So, Tuesday, I... I go to work. It's like raining a little bit. It's a little windy. Like, it's fine. I'm at work. I see it's raining more. And it's even more windy. And so I was like, cool. I'm going to leave early. Because I kept seeing on Twitter that they kept canceling ferries. And I take the ferry home. So I was like, maybe... Maybe I should go. Hmm. Yeah. And so I left. I walked over to the Embarcadero where the ferries are. And mm-hmm. the waves were quite literally going over the sidewalk. So I had to walk in like the bike area mm-hmm. <laughs> to get to where I needed to go. And I get there. And as soon as I get there, my ferry is sitting there. It's the only ferry sitting there. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I get there, there's like a tweet that's like, due to inclement weather, all ferries have been canceled until fur- further notice. I was like, how the hell am I going right. to get home? Right. I am stuck. And so here. I'm like, cool. I guess I'll take BART and just walk from the BART station to where my car is. It's yeah. not that close, but it's also not that far. So let's just go. Yeah. I'm walking to the BART station and I am being tossed around like a rag doll by wind. <laughs> no. Like I kid, like I kid you not. Like it was pushing me. Like it was strong when. Oh no! I make it to the Bart station. There are a ton of people down there. Like everybody is trying yeah. to take Bart. Yeah, and so everyone who didn't take the ferry now has to take the Bart. And so I'm a smart cookie. I'm a smart man. So I, mm-hmm. of course, know if you want to not be like pushed in with fifty million people you go to either the front or the back so i went to the front got in smoothly comfortably got to my stop looked up how far i needed to walk it said it was like a 15 minute walk to get to my car and i was like cool that's not that bad well i this bird station is underground i go up Mm -hmm. the weather is worse (laughs) <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? And so I I pull out my umbrella and my umbrella is fighting and then it eventually breaks. Like it like Aww. crumbles. And I'm yeah. like, cool, cool. Perfect. And so at this point, I am walking with just a like winter coat. Mm-hmm. And so the bottom half of my body is completely soaked. And when you add, like, the wind and all the rain, it took me, like, 20 minutes to get to my car. Oh, no. By the time I got to my car, I was completely soaked. Oh, no. And then I had to drive home wet and cold. And then I got home. It was still raining and shit. And I needed to let my dogs out. But I was like, they're not going to go outside in this. No. I let them out. Uh, The small one was like, let me back in. (laughs) <laughs> and dash is crazy so he was like True. i'm just gonna live out here now like i live right. out here yeah this is my home now just refusing to come in it was a mess that was a terrible day yeah just a tear a terrible day y'all are just getting killed out there yeah and then i think that's gonna happen again on tuesday and if it does i'm not going to work yeah, and you like can't I do that simply do not care. I'm not doing that again. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. Unless, like, the only way I'd be able to do that is if, like I wore like my snow boots and my snow pants. <laughs> that would be the only way I would be able to do it again. You need a whole poncho. You need a whole new umbrella. Double jacket. I don't have any more umbrellas. This winter has destroyed all of my umbrellas. No, no. That's how you know it's bad. This is the second, maybe third umbrella I've broken this winter. The third one? Yeah. 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 That's not right. It's not fun. 
So I've decided that I hate winter now. Oh. So yeah. I like winter. Winter's I don't. Okay. Winter sucks. <laughs> Not for you. So I kind of want to go back to the drought. No, uh, Jordan. Kind kind of miss the drought. Kind of miss being short on water. Yeah. I will say though, the drought in Mexico needs to be resolved ASAP. ASAP Rocky. Because oh, yep. there was a news article that there might be a tequila shortage. Shortage, yes. Hold, yes, pump the brakes. Pump, <laughs> pump the brakes. It takes me, it could take me like less than 10 hours to drive to Mexico right now. And we've been getting soaked. Where, 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 where are the water going? How come the water ain't been hitting Mexico? I mean, if it's been hitting us, it should have been hitting them. It should have been hitting them. I don't know what they got to do, but they better figure this out before Who's summer. Lying? Who's lying? <laughs> they, better, they better figure this out before summer. If I can't get Bro, a margarita they, this they, summer. They, they got to figure it out before we have time to go to Chili's, bro. We still oh, got to yeah. go to Chili's. We still need to go to Chili's. And if my drink ain't $5, I'm slapping somebody. Right. We're, we're going to be fighting somebody. Yeah, because the math ain't mathin'. Mm-mm. I want my tequila. Tequila <laughs> is my drink of choice. I hate vodka. Vodka is so fucking disgusting. I can drink whiskeys, but like, I don't, I don't really mm-hmm. want whiskey. I want tequila. Yeah. Tequila. Tequila. <laughs> I will literally Turns start it's plant. I will plant agave in my front yard if I have to. Like, don't play with me. <laughs> Not the agave in your front yard. I want tequila I'm this fine. summer. And he is going to get tequila this summer. I'm going to get tequila this summer. Whether he has to grow it himself or buy it. Yeah. I will look up how to make tequila. <laughs> Jordan's become, going to become his own distillery. Mm-hmm. I know some white men now. I'm sure they know how to brew alcohol. I know some white men. <laughs> That's hilarious. I think one of my coworkers told me that his friend like brews his own beer or something. I'm sure we can tra- trans. Of course. I'm sure that can somehow translate into tequila. I don't tequila. know. Tequila, yeah, right. I'll figure it out. You can get white men to do anything if you ask them and they need if you tell them you need help building something or need help like starting yeah. something. Oh my gosh. White men eat that up. If we've learned anything from Fox News, they are easily um, tricked. So maybe yes. <laughs> I can get them to make the tequila for me. Who knows? But yeah, um, everyone pray for me. It's not been a great week. So it will get better. Uh, hopefully it gets better. Hopefully it gets better. Okay, Kelly. Let's go you ahead ready? and talk about was it called the Night at the Museum or Night at the Museum? So I looked up Night at the Museum and then I got a whole title, man. Like it's not just Night at the Museum. Are you sure? Yeah. What's like it, it is called the it's called Night at the Museum, but like there's it's Night at the Museum and then there's like a second title underneath it. What's the second title? I don't know. Like I can't find it. Like You sure you sure that's what? not just one of the copious amount of sequels? The sequels? No, it wasn't the sequel, I swear. If I find it, I'll I'll let you know. Also, another because round of applause for Kelly. For doing yes! the first movie in a series. Look at me go. Like it Two has to a be a conscious choice now. Cause she knows like I, I will shade her every time. Yes, you will, and I hate it. So now But I will say when we watch National Treasure, and I will make you watch National Treasure, we are starting with the first one. Okay, anyway. let's get into this movie. <laughs> <laughs> So we start this movie with Nick going to check on his car uh, as he's trying to trick, um, I guess, 
police or whoever monitors the the parking meters that the meter is broken so he can park there for free but he has a parking ticket and a boot on his car and a boot yeah damn the boot was for insult the boot was personal that was personal the boot was personal (laughs) because who gets a boot over a parking ticket like come on no seriously seriously like the parking ticket that was for procedure boot he knows who that is Mm -hmm. so he put the boot on there they've met before yes they have (laughs) um so nick runs to his son's school and finds that he is already gone because it was a half day for career day and he didn't know so he shows up at his ex's house, Erica, looking for Teddy? his son, Nikki. Teddy? Mm-hmm. Grey's Anatomy's Teddy? Teddy? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> oh, hello? Hi there. Um, and he's looking for his son. And Erica has a serious conversation on how their son, Nikki, can't handle the instability that he creates by moving a lot because he can't keep a job and make money and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, why am I calling him Nick? His name is literally Larry. Why didn't you stop me? Who's Nick? Who's Larry? Larry's the... uh, You're bad at this. I'm not Yeah, don't ask me. Don't ask me. So Larry is his name. Larry takes Nikki to hockey. And after, they talk about uh, how up and down things have been for Larry and how... Nikki doesn't want to live that way, even though he's like, what, 10, 11? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he says he has to have a backup to hockey. And so he's going to be a, what, a bondsman? Is that what he said? Yeah, like Bonds- his stepfather, which, by the way, Step-dad? how long has Paul Rudd been in this movie? Yes, right. Paul Rudd is in this movie, by the way, if you guys didn't know. And so Larry goes to a hiring agency the next day and is desperate for anything for a job wise um mm-hmm. to which the lady gives him an ad to work at the natural history museum yeah he also gives a spiel about how he invented something called a snapper yes which is which turns on and off lights by snapping which is like the clapper and the she's clapper. like the cla- she, she's like clapping is easier and i'm like yeah yeah it is <laughs> it is He's like, like, that's debatable. And we're like, no, it's not. It's not. Not everyone can snap, but everyone can clap. That is true. So. That's true. Um, so at the museum, Rebecca, who it kind of looks like she works the front desk. She says she's a docent. Yeah. Which. Don't know what that means. Sorry. Don't know what that means. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, girly. Um. Uh, she takes not, him for his I'm interview. I'm not a. I'm not a history stand. I'm not a yeah. museum stand. I don't. I yeah. don't know what docents are. Me neither. Sorry. Um. So she takes him for his interview, and he speaks with head of security, Cecil. Cecil says that the museum is downsizing by having him and two of the other guards replaced by Larry, basically. Yeah, they said he said they're they're short on cash, and I'm like, aren't museums publicly funded? Ooh. like I know, like <laughs> I know that they get like donations and stuff, but aren't those donations mm-hmm. usually for like new exhibits and stuff? I think so. That's have they correct. been have they been using their donations for payroll? That don't sound Uh-oh. right to me. No, I think I there's some like there's... money laundering going on. Yeah, here. that sounds like money laundering. There's a scheme going on here. Yeah. Um, but he meets the two other guards that he is replacing, Gus and Reggie. And after basically being forced the job, um, Reggie asks if Cecil if he's the right guy for the job. And he says Larry is. So Cecil gives Larry a tour of the museum and the different exhibits. And in the Pharaoh room, he points out the tablet of Ahmed Ra. Um, after the tour, he tells Larry to show up at five tomorrow for the details of his job in his first day. That night, Larry calls Erica and tells her that he got a job at the museum and she's super excited for him. The next day, Larry shows up for his first shift and he is given his supplies, which is just the keys to the building and a flashlight. 
um, and the rule book before um, tell Cecil tells him to do his job fast and not let anything in or out. Yeah, he's really he's really like shook at him saying out. Oh, I'm like yeah. I'm like yes, people can steal shit. Like, come on, yeah. the door's out. Like, right. come on, sir. Right, like if they do get in, make sure they don't get out. Out you with anything. Me? Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what he's saying. <laughs> that's not what it's not what he's saying. But that's like what yeah. I was like. But like yeah, logically, like, that would be the job. Yeah. Don't let anyone steal anything. Of course. Yes. So, um for the first part of his shift, Larry just messes around with the intercom for a very long time. Before falling asleep. And when he wakes up, he realizes that the dinosaur is gone and thinks that Cecil has pranked him. How would Cecil he have then... done that? Huh? <laughs> how would Cecil have done that? Right, no, how seriously. Would, how would Cecil have moved that giant as fossil? Right, without making a noise enough to wake you up. Yeah. And who knows how long you've been sleeping. No. He then finds the dinosaur drinking from the water fountain and starts to get chased. Larry hides in the information booth and calls Cecil, who's hosting his retirement party, and tells Larry that the instruction manual will help him out. Um, The first step on the manual tells him to throw the bone. And so Larry throws the bone for the dino, and he basically acts like a puppy wanting to play fetch. Yeah. Um, and then he watches the rest of the museum come to life. Larry then has to run from Attila the Hun and locks himself into the, uh, I don't know what room this is, but it's like early American history, I guess. Yeah. Um, and gets caught in the fight between the North and the South. Mm-hmm. And then he runs to lock up the lions as that's like second on the, on the information list. Um, uh, but he has his keys stolen by Dexter, the capuchin monkey. Yeah. And... Why weren't the lions attacking the other animals? Right. They don't get hungry. They were, they were perfectly fine just sitting there with the other animals. And then, what What did you say his name was? Larry? Larry. <laughs> La- Larry comes in. And all of a sudden, they're like, oh, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. What if like they have there's... like a pact going on? And they're like, we'll only eat the night guards. We'll only eat the night guards. Only the yeah. humans. Yeah, just the humans. Nothing else. So once he gets his keys back, he locks up the animals. But Dexter has also stolen the instructions for his job and starts to rip them apart. And, and he bit him. Do you need a rabies shot if you get bit in the face by a fake monkey? No. No? Okay. No. I'm not taking any I mean, chances. I'm getting a rabies shot. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, later in the movie, we see Teddy Roosevelt being fixed because he's wax. And uh-huh. these are just, like, stuffed animals, right? Yeah, so they would just be, like, stuffing and stuff. But what if they were real How monkeys? did he pee, then? And they, like, taxidermied them. But how then how did Dexter I- pee? So he has to be... Hmm... <laughs> like I said, I'm still getting that rabies shot. <laughs> Just to be safe. Jordan's being extra safe. Um, Larry then tries to take a, take a break, but is ambushed by. Uh, oops, I put. Uh, Native Americans, but they are not Native Americans. They are part of one of the diorama exhibits. They are Aztecs. Are they? I was about to say Mayans. Mayans? We don't really get to see them that much, so I'm yeah. not sure. They they mention they show them like twice, so sorry to them. Sorry. Um but they're shooting uh, poison darts at him and he gets himself tied down by Jedediah and his cowboys who hit him with their steam train. Yeah. They're all miniatures, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um so nothing really happens. And then he is when he gets up from the the train track, he is then surrounded by Octavius and his Roman army. 
Larry is then saved by Teddy Roosevelt, who he grills for information and shows him the tablet of Ackman Ra and says that that is the reason why everything comes to life at night. Teddy then tells him that it's Larry's job to keep everyone inside because if they get out, the sun rises. Oh, well, if they get out and they're still out when the sun rises, they'll turn to dust. Yeah. How come everyone decided that everyone else could run around and do whatever the fuck they wanted, but the Pharaoh had to stay locked up? Right. It's a little racist to me. In it fact, all, all the people of color are locked up. That is true. Sac- Sacagawea is in a glass case with yeah, two she's white in men. in a glass cage. I go um, insane. <laughs> the Pharaoh is literally locked up. Locked in his, in his tomb. Thing. Yeah. What's going on here? Yeah, I don't know. We need to have a discussion. We need to have a town hall. Everyone, everyone right. meet in the lobby. Right, everyone meet in the lobby. We're going to talk about something. There's some racism happening here. There is, especially in the nor- uh, um, the American uh, little section. We still got yeah. the North and South fighting. There, there's no, there's no way that Genghis Khan gets to run around here doing whatever the fuck he wants. <laughs> but the Pharaoh can't come out of his tomb. Like what? Right, Christopher Columbus is still allowed to go out and do stuff. Yeah, make it make sense. Yikes. <laughs> And keep him away from Sacagawea. <laughs> yes. Please. Teddy then helps Larry secure everybody in the museum. And he catches him watching Sacagawea. But he says Stay he's just... Stay away from her. She's a child. Looking. She's, she's literally a child. She if I remember correctly from U.S. history, she was like 15. Like, leave her alone. And apparently she had a child. So... I'm going to pretend like it wasn't her child. I'm going to pretend like it was like a brother or a sister. Okay. Okay. Just a sibling. A sibling, yes. Um, So Larry tells Teddy that he doesn't think he'll stay after the first crazy night. But after a little pep talk from him, he decides that he'll stay. I wouldn't. (laughs) And when he says how much he's getting paid for that, I wouldn't either. I mean, this was like, what year was this? 20... 2005? 6? Which, I guess. I guess this was an okay pay. It was like yeah, 11.25, right? 11, he said 11.50. 11. 11. Like, not, not that bad in 06. But for the New York area? Not, not an amount of money that, as his ex-wife, I would have found as... Um like healthy and safe as she was looking mm-hmm. for but mm-hmm. not bad not bad it's it's his first job like steady job yeah um larry then catches jedediah in his coat pocket and puts him back in his little case as the sun rises and the museum goes back to normal cecil gus and reggie then show up in the morning to check on larry and he has a breakdown because that was not in his job description and no. tells them he quits. Mm-hmm. I also would quit. Yeah. As he leaves the building, he runs into Nikki and Don. And when he sees how excited Nikki is about his new job, he goes back in to get his job back. Yeah. Uh, Dr. McPhee, who I guess is, he's kind of like a curator for the museum. I guess. Okay. I think I don't know that woman's name, uh, but she said he was Rebecca. The... Rebecca, sure. Uh, <laughs> he is like he's like the the head honcho. I guess curator is a good good name. Yeah, I guess. Also, I looked at what docent is. Oh, what is it? It's like a professor, like someone who like teaches something at like a school or an institution oh okay so she's a teacher the the like american equivalent is an associate professor so she's like a teacher oh okay okay that makes sense weird way to put it though yeah weird um 
So Dr. McPhee calls Larry to show him that Jedediah has Octavius locked in, uh, I don't know what they're called. Those, that little thing where you put your head in your Head in and your arms are... And they yeah. lock you in there. Whatever that's yeah. called. Whatever that's called. He's locked up in it. Yeah. Um, and he gets told off for um, messing with the exhibits. Um, Larry then follows Rebecca's tour. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. After his talk with uh, Dr. McPhee... Larry then tries to get another copy of the rules from Cecil and says that he doesn't have one, which I feel like that's a lie. Um, yeah. But tells him to brush up on his history to better help him so that he can understand who he's working with. Uh, Larry then follows Rebecca's tour and keeps interrupting for information until he gets her to agree to give him like some information when she's done with her tour. After, Rebecca and Larry walk the park as they talk about the exhibits, and then Larry does some research of his own, like at the library and on his own laptop. Larry shows up for his second shift, and Cecil, Gus, and Reggie come to say goodbye since they'll be going on vacation. And as they leave to walk Larry out, well, to have Larry walk them out, Reggie says that he needs a moment because he's emotional. But he's actually getting a copy of one of Larry's keys. That phone he used to copy the keys would not have worked. No. Mm -mm. He just like had like regular phone and he like just pressed the key down on it. I was like, what is that going to do? Right. Like the the impression did not look deep enough. It was not deep. And it didn't look clean enough either because I feel like he got his finger on, on one part. I'm like, yo. What is like, going if you on? really wanted to do this well, you would have like made a cast of the key. Yes, yes. Ah. Um. After the three leave, Larry that goes around to the exhibits, giving them stuff to do. Um. So he like ties the bone to a little RC car so that the dino can chase it. He gives the Easter Island head gum. He gives the caveman fire for that some was reason. So dumb. That was, that was the like they, dumbest they've thing never seen fire did. before. Like they are not going to use that responsibly. No, sir. They don't please. know. The, they don't know how dangerous fire is. Right. Um. At the diorama room, he talks to Di- uh, Jedediah and Octavius, and gives them a deal to roam around their area if they agree to be nice because he's already locked the Mayans or the Aztecs into their little cage. Yes. Uh, Larry then runs into Teddy spy on Sacagawea again and tells him to go talk to her, but he chickens out. She's also behind a glass wall, so she can't hear anything anyway. Yeah. Uh, We then see as someone enters a room and leaves uh, gold relics in a desk drawer. Um, Back in the museum, Attila and his soldiers um, are coming up against Larry again, and he does magic tricks for them because he found that Attila liked sorcery and magic when he was alive. Um, But he messes up one of the tricks, and they try to pull him apart when the African mammals run down from their area. They they were supposed to be locked up, but Dexter, who he thought he tricked with baby keys, actually stole his real keys back and let everybody yep. out. Yeah. Yeah. That freaking monkey. Larry then finds Octavius and Jed fighting as Dexter opens a window. Um, there's chaos with other exhibits as he keeps chasing after Dexter for his keys. One of the cavemen see the open window and leave through it to go see, um, a fire that is started outside. Larry then gets in a slapping fight with Dexter and Teddy has to stop it. (laughs) And he gets the keys and he subsequently quits again because he was literally just in a slap fight with a monkey. And it went on for a long time. It went on for a very long time. It went on for a very long time. (laughs) Um, Larry won't be reasoned with. And when he goes to walk out, 
gets told by Christopher Columbus that someone left through the window. And when he notices the sun rising, Larry rushes out to save the caveman, but it's too late and he turns to dust. Why? Yeah, well, I don't know. Why do they turn to dust if they're outside during the day? And does that mean that they can never go outside? Yes. Also, like if, there's an, like if there's an exhibit that like is being moved off site, will the entire thing just disappear as they're taking it out to the truck? Well, aren't they like packed away so they wouldn't see the sunlight? I don't know. Uh, I don't also, know. shouldn't the power of the tablet stop at the museum? Like, if they leave the museum, they should just go revert back to what they are. You know what I mean? Um, uh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> because, because towards the end of the movie, they all go pretty far away from the museum. They do. <laughs> they go really far from the museum. And they're, they're fine. Yeah. I don't know, man. Larry then takes the keys back from Teddy. Um, after everything has gone back to normal, by the way. Mm-hmm. Nikki and his friends show up at the museum uh, because Nikki wants to get his dad to show them around. And he gets there in time to see his dad get in trouble with Dr. McPhee and fired. Yeah, getting fired in front of your child is probably one of the most embarrassing things that can happen to you on the planet. Like, yeah. <laughs> on <laughs> this yeah. planet. Yeah, I'd I'd rather not. I'd rather also die. getting fired in public. Yeah, absolutely not. I'd rather die. Yeah. Thank you. Kill me. Fire Thanks. me somewhere else, please. <laughs> yeah, anywhere um, else. Anywhere else, I'm begging. So Larry follows Doctor McPhee to his office and begs for his job back, and he's given one more night, which is insane. Larry then, sh- yeah, I would yeah, I would not trust that man. Larry then shows up at Erica's house to see Nikki, and he's upset because he knows that his dad lost his job. But Larry says it was all just a misunderstanding with his boss and invites him to go to work with him that night. And Erica warns him to not disappoint Nikki because she doesn't think he can take it again uh, anymore. That night, he brings Nikki to work and after closing, finds Rebecca with Sacagawea and finds that she's been writing a research paper on her but she's thinking of getting up af- giving up after she's hit a wall um as she leaves larry goes to stop her and explains that the museum comes to life at night and that he could she could talk to sacagawea like herself but she doesn't believe him which because what sane person would right under it's very understandable he didn't even um, have to say anything. He didn't like, hey, just stay here a little bit longer. Yeah, right. He could have been like, hey, you know, uh, maybe stay 30 more minutes. Th- and... 30 more minutes. I need to show you something. Yeah, I need to show you something. <laughs> um, but she leaves, not believing him. And when it is time for everyone to come alive, nothing happens. And Nikki is upset. But when he goes to check on the tablet in the Pharaoh's room, finds that it's gone. And Nikki tries to leave. Larry then sees someone leaving through the dock of the museum. And when he comes down, finds Cecil, Gus, and Reggie stealing the tablet in other parts of the uh, museum exhibits. Mm -hmm. Nikki gets his hands on the tablet and turns the middle piece, making everything alive again in the museum. And when Larry tells him to run, he runs. Cecil, Reggie, and Gus then fight Larry. And tell them that after they got fired, they had to steal the tablet. And they've planted evidence in his apartment that show that he, Larry, is the one that actually that is the one that's been stealing and not them. Yeah. Do you want to know why they stole this fucking tablet? It's because it made them feel younger, quote unquote. Yes. Like that's so ob- that's so objective. Like, what do you mean it, it makes you objective. feel younger? Right. And also, like, you're tech- still old. Like, it didn't actually make you any younger. Yeah. Like, you could go out and join some class, or you can go out and see something new and still feel alive and yeah. young. Like, but you're it's still not- old. 
Yeah, it's not taking you back. It's not making you any younger physically. It's just making yeah. you feel young. Like y'all. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Um, so the guys catch up with Nikki and take the tablet before locking up both Larry and Nikki in the fair room and leaving. Larry calls for Teddy's help, but he just tells them that he's a wax figure. He's not the actual Teddy Roosevelt. And that Larry is the one that needs to figure out who he is and what he'll do. The statues of Anubis in the fair room go to attack Larry and he decides to free Achman Ra. When he releases him from his coffin, he stops the statues and when he unwraps himself, is thankful for their help and asks for his tablet so that he can start his rule over his land. Which, not his land. Secondly, why does he have a British accent? He said he has a British accent because he spent time at um, whatever British museum he was No, in. he said he could speak English because he, sp- because he spent time at Cambridge or whatever. Yeah. That doesn't explain why he has a British accent. But wouldn't that explain that he, why he has a British accent? Because he learned English in England? No. When people from different <laughs> countries come to America, they don't, or they don't just get American accents. They speak True, but English he's never... with their accent. Mm. No idea then. I do not Lazy. know what to tell you. It's whitewashing. <laughs> it's whitewashing of history, and I don't like it. Um. So the pharaoh breaks them out, and when they go to the entrance, find all the exhibits fighting and causing chaos in the lobby. Larry then meets with Attila, and they have a screaming match before Achman Ross steps in to translate what he is saying. And Attila basically wants to rip him apart. (laughs) But Larry has a therapy session with him to deal with Attila the Hun's daddy and abandonment issues. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a lot. (laughs) Larry then gets the attention of the other exhibits with the Easter Island head. And gives each of them instructions to help him find the tablet. Jed and Octavius and their men are to go to the van and try and stop it. Um, Which they start by taking the air from the tires. The Civil War, uh, the North and South, are working together. And they catch Gus and Columbus and the cavemen catch Reggie. It's still still fuck Columbus in this household. I don't care what he does. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) <laughs> um Cecil is still on the run but he gets hit by um water from a whale in the ocean life room but still manages to drive off with the tablet um Larry finds that the van is gone so he goes to get Sacagawea to help track him but finds that he crashed the van and went back into the museum to get something the Sacagawea tracking scene is the only part of the movie that made me laugh. Like, genuinely <laughs> laugh. <laughs> no, yeah, like, it is She was funny. like, he lost control and crashed. He was like, wow, you could tell all of that just from these tire marks. She was like, well, his car is right there. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, if you kind of just look up, you'll see if that the van is crashed. off of screen, it's right yeah. there. Yeah, it's like 20 feet from us. Yeah. <laughs> but Cecil has gone back into the museum to get the stagecoach and she almost gets run over but Teddy pushes her out of the way and gets split in half by the coach Larry then chases Cecil in his stagecoach on Teddy's horse as Jed and Octavius drive the toy Hummer uh, with the bone attached to it so the dino can chase them Jed and Octavius get into an accident as Larry continues to chase Cecil and eventually throws him off the coach. Attila and his men take him back to the museum and as Sacagawea fixes Teddy by remelting his wax and forming it again. Yep. (laughs) Achman Ra is given the tablet and he uses it to get all of the exhibits back to the museum and calls Rebecca to um to see them all alive which she does from her taxi that is taking her to the museum Mm -hmm. 
Also, uh, the there's exhibits. no one on the streets. Yeah, there is, is nobody on the streets. This is New York City. No one yeah. on the streets. That is not true. Also, there is somebody as, outside always. Always. Also, while they are going back to the museum, the sun is starting to come out. How long did all that of this true. take? Right. They've been doing this for hours. Insanity. Um, so the museum exhibits line back into the building as Teddy and Sacagawea show up and Rebecca also shows up and she is such a huge fan of Sacagawea that the two of them walk away so that they can talk. Everyone has been accounted for except for Jed and Octavius who they think have died but Nikki sees them climbing their way back up the steps to the museum. Once everyone is finally back inside, Teddy gets back on his pedestal and asks Larry if he's going to stay. But he says he doesn't know since he left the museum in an awful state and he doesn't oh, it looks, able to keep his job. It looks awful. It looks like, awful. Like, who is going to clean all of that shit up? Yeah. If I was the janitor, I would quit. I'm like, absolutely not. I'm not cleaning all of this up. Yeah, I would have walked in and been like, I know that's my job, but that's not my job. That's not my job. This place was clean when no. I left. I, yeah. I'm not doing Technically, this. Technically, I did do my job, and someone yeah. came in here and messed that up. So yeah, it is no longer my job. So on TV that morning, there are reports showing um, evidence that the exhibits were out that night with the uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex tracks out in the snow cavemen drawings people witnessing the cavemen on top of the museum building yes. um and dr mcphee fires larry for having no explanation about what happened and you don't have an explanation because yeah, there's nothing to explain there's nothing to say so as dr mcphee goes to walk larry out he sees the museum full of people visiting and immediately gives his job back Mm-hmm. which no <laughs> no yeah. no yeah um sometime later at nikki's school they have another career day and how he many has does he dad. get in a, in a year right <laughs> <laughs> um he has his dad do a presentation and at the museum that night they have a party with nikki and the other exhibits and that is where the movie ends. Yep. Yay. Yay. Are you ready for the movie facts? I am. So, the first one. The real-life American Museum of Natural History had a 20% increase in visitors during the holiday season after this movie's opening. Good for them. Good for them. Um... Stuntman Roger Lewis, um, who was one of the cowboys, broke vertebrae in his neck while oh filming God. the scene where Jedediah and Octavius let air out of the van's tires. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. That, How did that, that happen? Intense. I don't even know, dude. That man was wrecked, though. Um... Next one. Despite their respective careers of more than 50 years each, this is only the second time Mickey Rooney and Dick Van Dyke have worked together. Their first time being in the comic from 1969. Was not aware Mickey Rooney was in this movie. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> yes. Did he play the, 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 the grouchy one? Yes, he the, did. Like, the, okay, cool. Gus. Cool, Gus. I'm not gonna remember that grouchy yeah. one. The grouchy Got it. one. Um, this is Rami Malek's film debut. Oh, yay! Good for him. Um, and my last movie fact: uh, Larry asks Teddy if he can ask him a question, and Teddy replies, "Yes, but only one." Larry's response was, "What is this? Some kind of three wishes thing?" Which is a nod to Robin Williams being in Genie, being the Genie in Aladdin. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. He also just he also just wasted his question. 
Yeah, he did. So this was a genie, <laughs> a genie uh, situation. He just wasted yes. one of his quote unquote wishes. Right, right. Like Larry, do better. Do better. Do better, please. All right, Jordan, here's the question. Mm-hmm. Is this movie iconic? No. I remember this movie being better. It's actually really, it's actually a really, yeah. really bad movie. <laughs> it's actually really for bad. For some reason, for like what I remember, I'm like, hmm. Also, I felt like this movie was longer. Same. You know what? I think I remember the second movie more than I remember the first, if I'm being honest. Because the second one is the Amelia second one, Earhart. the one with Amelia. Yeah. 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 And and the uh, the thinker. And the Jonas Brothers. They played like the what are those things called? Not cupids. What are Excuse those me? things? They played. They're the in little, the, They're in this. They, they played the little singy thingies. What are those called? Cherubs. Maybe. Yes. No. Let me let me look. Bill Hader's in the second one? I didn't know that. Battle of the Smithsonian. Yeah, I remember this one a lot more than... Where are the Jonas Brothers? They yeah, the they're the cherubs. Cherubs, yeah. I was right. Cool. Oh my gosh. Now I feel like I need to watch the second one. Because I remember the second one. You do that. <laughs> But yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I do remember the second one a lot more than the yeah than the uh, first one. So not iconic, but, huh? Yeah, not iconic. Yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. It, it's it's fine. It got like two, three additional movies. That is true. It's it's fine. That is true. I don't think I ever saw the third one. Whatever the third I one didn't. is. I did not see that one. I had probably like seriously aged out by that point. <laughs> probably. Probably. So yeah. Okay, Jordan, what are your recommendations for this week? Let's see. Oh yeah. The the last one was two twenty fourteen. Yeah. We we, we had definitely mm, aged yeah, out. Yeah, definitely we, not, yeah. We, we we may have we were either juniors going into Senior year oh, or seniors, seniors about to graduate. Um, but yeah, my recommendations. My first one is a song called Foreign Things by Amber Mark. Really good song. Mm. It was recommended to me on, not recommended to me, but like a TikTok came up. And the mm-hmm. song was in the TikTok. And I was like, oh, I like that song. It sounds good. And I listened to it. And it was good. Yeah. My second recommendation, as soon as I get home by faith evans great song Hmm. really enjoy that song and then my last recommendation is uh modern family i'm re-watching it right now Hmm. so much fun i love modern family what are their names um phil and claire power couple power couple yeah power couple Hmm. i don't know why I don't know why Jay and Gloria are still together. They they seem ripe for divorce. <laughs> Jay, Jay, is, Jay is so mean to her. And to Manny. Like, I mm. don't understand why she stays with that man. I don't know, man. He is so he is so mean to everyone involved in this family. But yeah, um, those are mine. What about you? So I have two. My first one is, uh, oops, I forgot what the artist's name was. When It Was Always You by, one second, let me check if it's Spotify. <laughs> I love this song, but I don't, Stephen Day, or Ste- S- S- Stephen Day, or S- Stephen Day? Who knows? Um, (laughs) yes um and my second one i feel like is a i feel like i can't recommend but i'm going to recommend it anyway okay um prepped it it's it's scandal yeah (laughs) 
<laughs> I love Scandal. Okay, I'll Jordan rewatch is- it. Okay, <laughs> I'll rewatch it. Okay. So I'm watching it for the first time, and now Jordan will have to rewatch it with me. Um, because I'll probably catch up to her very soon. I love yes, Scandal. T- TikTok has just been throwing these awesome edits at me, and I'm like, I'm going to have to watch it. Gosh dang you it. You have to watch Scandal. So, yes. I, I've i seen a, maybe too many spoilers, but I'm going to watch it anyway because I'm sure those spoilers are like seasons away. Mm-hmm. So, You'll probably forget. I probably will, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I am, I have been influenced. Good. I have been influenced. Good. Scandal is top tier television i'm sorry it is it's top tier television shonda was in her bag in the scandal days scandal is everything that all her other shows want to be it's Mm -hmm. better than Grey's anatomy it's better than bridgerton it's better Mm -hmm. it's i even think it's better than how to get away with murder i do I do. Really? I think it's better than How to Get Away with Murder. Scandal is her magnum opus. It is the best show she has ever made. I love Scandal. Wow. All right. I haven't been more talked about highly. Scandal, go off. Yeah, I love Scandal. Okay. Um, but thank you so much for listening, guys. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, everyone, go watch Scandal. And then (laughs) don't forget (laughs) to follow us on our social media. We have a Twitter Mm -hmm. and an Instagram. They're both at SYTYI Podcasts. Mm -hmm. Also, don't forget to send us your movie requests or your movie stories. If you want us to watch the other Night of the Museums, let us know. Mm -hmm. Um, If this was your favorite movie and we sort of shit on it and you're upset with us, I'm so sorry. Sorry. We've but probably done that to a lot of other movies that people like. We've done it to a lot of other movies. Like, I feel so bad for the people who listen to our... What was that episode? What was that episode? What was that episode? It was a Christmas movie. What episode was that? Oh, no. We haven't done too many Christmas movies. It was... Which one was it? The Family Stone. I feel so sorry for anyone who listens oh. to the Family Stone episode thinking we were going to be like all happy go lucky. I hated that movie. So I'm so <laughs> sorry for whoever that, listened. That movie stresses me out, dude. Yeah, it stressed me it the fuck out. I was me not. Out. I was not having fun. So I. No. So if we like just shit on your favorite movie, I'm so sorry. Yeah. But like, we're, I think we're publicly apologizing for anything No, so Yeah, but like I like movies that other people don't like That's You're true. gonna like movies that I don't like I'm gonna like yep. movies that you don't like Everyone has their movies yeah. that they like Everyone okay? has their opinion It's fine Yeah, Does we're, not really we're matter. okay We're good yeah. We're good So yeah, share us with your friends and your family even if mm-hmm. they like this movie. Who cares? <laughs> Let them listen. Subscribe to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. And rate and review us on Apple Podcasts with five stars. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, everyone have a good week. What mm-hmm. week is this? This is the week of Kelly's birthday. Happy birthday, Kelly. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I, I I think it is. I don't. We're supposed to be going to dinner. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan's we're... like, it's somewhere around the time we're gonna go to dinner, and and this is I'm the week we're going to it. dinner. Like this episode yeah. comes out the week we're going to dinner. So I'm guessing this week is her birthday at some point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm neither going to confirm nor deny. I'm just going to wait for a text message either on the Girl, day, not on the day, or well, I, after the day. <laughs> if Facebook doesn't tell me, you, you probably won't get it on the day. I'm so sorry. Okay, that's fine. That's I'm terrible. Is it April 7th? 9th? 8th? 6th? Oh, <laughs>
How long have we been friends, Jordan? <laughs> no, wait. I will say this until the day I die. It took me 16 years to remember my mother's birthday. Do you know your sister's birthday? Yes. Okay, at least you know that. <laughs> at least you know that, okay? Oh my goodness, 16 years to remember your mother's birthday? Yes, it took me 16 years to remember my mother's birthday. I'm sorry to And even you. still, I, I'm a little shaky. <laughs> uh, a little shaky. Nah, y'all. I don't know what my I don't know what my grandpa's birthday is. It's sometime in June. Okay. I know my aunt's birthday because it's the day after mine. Okay, that's kind of cheating, but okay. And I know my cousin's birthday because it is... I know two of my cousin's birthdays. One, because okay. it's the day before mine. And another, oh my one gosh. Because, and another one because it's four days after mine. Oh my... That's cheating. <laughs> that, that should not count. Oh, and I know that one of my uncle's count. birthdays because it's the same day as my sister's birthday. Oh my gosh. Everybody else's birthday... He- over my head. I'm so sorry. What about our what about our other friend? Do you know when her birthday is? Which one? Blondie or Oh. The one you went Sep- on a hike with. She literally just told me last week. Oh September my gosh. September 9th. The second first. Close. There we go. <laughs> I knew- got that. The- I'm getting better. I'm remembering the months. I'm remembering yeah, there the you months. Go. That's there you all. Go. I'm getting better. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I'm you know better. what? Just to cover yourself at the beginning of like the birthday month to say happy birthday month. Happy birthday just month. Just so you covered. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm going to start doing that. Okay. When, when is April right. 1st? I'm going to text you on April 1st. Be like, happy birthday. <laughs> it's a Saturday. <laughs> it's on Saturday. Okay. I'm going to be like, happy birthday. <laughs> I will. I will accept that as my birthday. I will be year. out. I will be out of town, but I'll. I'll remember. Oh, will Hopefully. you? Okay. Yeah. Hopefully. No, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm so sorry you had to listen to that. Bye. Yes. Stay Bye. Iconic. Stay iconic. <laughs>